All right, everyone, here's a quick little tutorial for the Flame Tests of Metal Labs. This is the virtual learning option of my most favorite lab that we do, um, and this is the Honors Chem version. So what we need to look at is that we are observing and identifying different ions using flame tests. This is fun because you get to burn things. I wish we were doing it in real life but um, we came up with some good alternatives for you. All right, so a thing to remember for our background is that we have our ground state um, position of our electrons around our atoms. And when they get heated up or if they get bombarded with electricity, they are going to jump up to the excited state. Oh my goodness, they're so excited. And then when they fall back down, they release energy in the form of light. And since our different elements have different numbers of electrons, so different electrons means different colors. All right, we see different characteristic colors for each of our um, specific elements. So as we look down here, we have the flame test for lithium. It's this beautiful um, red with a little bit of orange tint to it. Sodium is a characteristic yellow, like our sodium lamps in the street. Potassium is purple, so is rubidium and cesium. Calcium, strontium, uh, barium, copper, and uh, thallium. All right, so we go over the materials. If we were in class, we would definitely need safety goggles so that we could use our Bunsen burner safely. Um, I personally like to moisten wooden splints and let them dry out and then burn them. They, the, the fire is a little bit more intense than using a flame loop, but um, we'll show you those options in our little video here. Okay, so the pre-lab questions, please look in your textbook or in your notes for the definition of a photon, the ground state, excited state, frequency, and wavelength. Don't Google these terms because I don't really want an astrophysicist version of this. I want something that pertains to class, okay? So if we were in class, um, what we would be doing is taking each one of our seven different metals and we would be putting them into the hottest region of the Bunsen burner. So a Bunsen burner has a double blue cone, an inside and an outer blue cone. The tip of the inner blue cone is definitely going to be the warmest one and is allowed for the most excitation of our elements. So what we're gonna do in the virtual setting is we are going to watch this um, video of a person doing the flame test lab. It's an embedded YouTube video. So my suggestion for you is to split your screen like so. You can use the Duales extension for Google Chrome and you can watch the video over here and answer the lab over here at the same time. So you'll see that um, if you put on the closed captioning for your subtitles, it'll be a little bit better for you. So you can see the different color tones, push pause in between as you type in your responses. Be as descriptive as possible with your colors. Like, don't just call this pink, you know, call it hot pink or magenta or fuchsia or something along the lines that you will definitely remember what those colors look like. All right, I, um, I positioned it so that the same color order that they do here is the same element order is the same as the element order here in your lab. Okay, um, so definitely push pause in between as you are doing your flame test colors over here. Another thing to show you is um, if you have the capability on your device to run this Java lab, you can mimic putting things into the fire as well. Um, this might not work on all your devices, and I'm sorry that we don't have uh, universal Chromebooks to give you where all of this stuff will work, but you see here we have um, sodium nitrate. Um, sodium, the metal is the first element here, has 11 protons. It also has 11 electrons around its atom. At, around its nucleus, and as I put it in, you can see its characteristic um, 
spectra that is released right there. It doesn't matter if it's sodium nitrate or sodium chloride, you get the same answer. It is the metal that is going to be uh, relieving the colors. Okay, lithium is a third, ele uh, or third element, strontium is number 38, strontium chloride, um, like I said, it doesn't matter what it's bonded to, just as long as it is the strontium that gives it that beautiful color. Then you have potassium, and calcium, copper, copper, and barium, okay? So definitely check those out as well, but unfortunately it might not work on all the devices. Once you have finished in your flame test, so you are gonna come down here to the unknowns and click on the images and see if you can match that up with one of these elements up here. So the more descriptive you are with these, the easier it will be for you to identify your unknowns. So unknown B is this orangey color, C is this red with orange, D is this purple, and notice E is very similar to C, but they are different. So again, be as descriptive with your colors as possible. Okay, the last portion of the lab that shouldn't take you very long is to answer your questions. Um, so you can fill them in right here and start typing. It said, would flame tests be useful in detecting metal ions present in a mixture of metal ions? Explain why or why not. Um, the energy of colored light increases from red, yellow, green, blue to violet. So list the metals in the flame test in the same increasing red, yellow, green, blue, violet color. So that means come up here and figure out which ones were red, write those elements first, then the orange ones, then the yellows, then the greens, then the blues, then the violets. All right, so you should be writing element um, names in here. For number three, sodium has a very strong line at 589 nanometers, which gives it its characteristic color. So convert that into that wavelength into meters and then frequency and then energy calculations. So review from the other lab. So if we have 589 nanometers, we're going to use one nanometer um, is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative ninth meters by placing 1 nanometer on the bottom, 1 times 10 to the negative ninth meters up top. And we see that nanometers and nanometers are going to cancel out, giving us a wavelength of 5.89 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. So this is our lambda value. Next up, we are going to calculate the frequency of this wavelength. So we know that we have the speed of light equation, C equals lambda nu, and we're going to isolate the frequency by itself. So divide both sides by lambda, and we get uh, nu equal to C over lambda. Our speed of light is a constant, 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And then you'll plug in your wavelength from that first calculation, 5.89 times 10 to the negative 7th meters. What that will mean is that meters and meters will cancel out and you will get your um, frequency of something times 10 to the 14th reciprocal seconds. That's what's possible for the range that's possible for visible light. And then lastly, what you are going to do is you are going to calculate the energy of that frequency using Planck's equation, E equals H nu. We'll plug in our 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds. You'll plug in your value from the previous part here. So whatever that answer is times 10 to the 14th reciprocal seconds. And then lastly, seconds and per seconds will cancel out. Your energy will be some value times 10 to the negative 19th joules. That is the acceptable range for a visible light photon in our calculations. Okay, there are two additional quick questions that I hope you um, enjoy. It says, during the holiday season, home improvement stores sell pre-treated logs that burn uh, green and red. So what ions are they treated with? And in the summer, where would you see an application of this lab? Hint, 
It's on the 4th of July up in the sky. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, we will revisit our conclusion again. Again, there are embedded links for um, the sample lab report, the format, and the conclusion template. Most people like to open up this conclusion template and see the descriptors underneath each of these seven parts of our conclusion. Okay, um, so we're going to start with the opening statement where you will restate the purpose of this lab. Then you will restate your data by telling me the color of the lithium flame and the sodium and the potassium and all the others. And then you'll also identify the unknowns. The how and the why we went over in the background, how the excited state and the ground state and the release of the energy. The variables are independent, dependent, and control. An independent variable is one that is changed between each one of the trials, so the thing that you manipulate. The dependent variable is the resulting um, observation, so what you would see from that, and what things are held the same between each one. A possible source of error, oh, there's so many that could go wrong in this lab, so you want to make sure that you can identify at least one of those. A suggestion or alteration would be another way to see the same um, purpose or achieve the same purpose um, or to work backwards or to deconstruct this or to reimagine this lab. Um, and if you think of what we're doing up here in the holiday season and in the summer, I'm sure you can think of some fun, probably not school appropriate things to do. And then in conclusion, you should restate the purpose and how it was achieved. If you have any questions, please email me or leave a comment in Google Classroom and have fun. Enjoy the pretty colors.